Hi again, we're back. We're gonna listen to another one of our discussions. We're talking you, to you in the future from the past. Welcome to discussion three. I'm Robert Martin, but what else is new? I'm Cherokee. I'm Maylee. I'm Anna. <laughs> so today I'm gonna be discussing the difference between state government versus federal government. So the definition of federal government is has limited power all over power of over all 50 states. State government has the power to regulate within their state boundaries. So yeah, that's the definition for both state government and federal government. And then we can use that to help us structure some of our, our arguments in our discussion. Thank you for that. So Cherokee, you said earlier you had some stuff you wanted to talk about and jump in. Okay, so I think the most interesting one, at least from my research, is federal versus state marijuana laws. So it's interesting because federal government classifies marijuana as a Schedule I drug, which is the same class as heroin, which means they consider it more dangerous than Schedule II drugs like cocaine and meth. And also, it can't be rescheduled until it goes through a large-scale clinical trial, but it's almost impossible to conduct a trial that large with current federal laws. So I think that's really crazy because, like, I've seen people who smoked and, like, I don't think it has as big an effect as heroin. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's a good place to start um, because I, I apologize. I need a little bit of clarification. What is a scheduled one drug, scheduled two drugs? It's just the category that they put it in. So schedule one, they have marijuana, which also in that same, like it's the class that they're in. So that's like a really high category. Like it's a really hard drug, I would say. Is that the right word? Uh, yeah, like, so they like more of a dangerous drug. Represented maybe. as a hard or dangerous drug because they haven't done a whole lot of clinical trials on it, but the federal laws that we currently have make it to where it's almost impossible to do such a large trial like that. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Uh, it's a schedule one drug, but it's been used sometimes for medicine for certain people. Yeah, so that's where state laws come in. So some states have legalized marijuana laws for recreational and medical use, while most just limit to medical use. So it can be used for medical, but they're talking about like other than medical, what it's classified under. Oh, okay. That, that makes a little more sense. Thank you, Cherokee. And with that, I actually have the, this this one article um, on the very reputable criminaldefenselawyer.com, uh, it kind of gives a listing and it says in 2013, uh, the DOJ, the Department of Justice, um, under Obama's administration announced that it would not interfere with marijuana operations that strictly complied with state regulations. So I guess that kind of opened it up for states to start making laws about you know, medical use and about recreational use, but I mean, that wouldn't come until later on. However, there are still like some actions that, you know, federal law still supersedes. So like, for example, um, they focus on marijuana revenue that appears to fund gangs, the distribution of marijuana to minors, marijuana moving across state lines or moving from states where it's legal to a state where it's illegal, money laundering systems, which are always fun violence and firearm use and growing or distributing marijuana. So I guess that kind of ties into gang, uh, gang use and distribution. But, and then finally we have marijuana possession or use on federal property, which is kind of a given since it's a federal location. It's not technically within state bounds. Um, that's what I wrote here. But yeah, like, what do you guys think? Is that fair? Because in any case, the federal government could come in and say, you know, they could prosecute for use 
but they just don't because state laws, they don't supersede federal government. They, they just don't allow you to be prosecuted. Actually, that, that might be due to uh, drug, drug, there's drug courts and that would be under special ju jurisdictions. And then between the jurisdictions, there's um, supreme jurisdiction. And also I apologize for some background noise. And then there would also be some, the general jurisdiction, which would usually go to the states. So the special jurisdictions would usually be for things like pro, probate, which I think is probation, I think, tax, traffic, juvenile, and in some cities, drug courts. Those would be the special cases, which would mean that with, since they're special cases, there are special courts for those types of cases. So it's not just, um, the Supreme Court or the um, general court, it genuinely depends on the case and what it's about to what court it goes to. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that, that like, so if you have like a drug case, it goes not just to a general court, but it would go to that special court which deals in that. Yes, it, it's possible for it to go to the general court depending on the city. But for, I believe most times it would go to the drug court depending on the city and if, there's a reason for it. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be muted for a few minutes. That's okay. But yeah, thank you for that clarification there because I, I, mean, I didn't know that personally. Um, but yeah, I, I could definitely see how that could affect things because then they, they can use different jurisdiction kind of and supersede different laws if they're specialized for drug cases, I would guess. Mm -hmm. And I'll have a any evidence to back that claim yeah i don't have any evidence on that either i forgot to tell you my source my apologies on that um this is first it is called law.jrank.org it's where i got it from Thank it you goes over Yes, it goes into state jurisdiction, what jurisdiction means and the different jurisdictions and federal jurisdiction. Okay, cool. So another thing that I found going off of that is that the big divide between federal and state laws when, with marijuana happened in 2009 when the Obama administration sent a memo to federal prosecutors asking them not to go after people who distributed medical marijuana according to the laws of their states. Okay. So that's kind of where the big like separation of what was federal and what was state came into. Okay, so basically his administration prevented like prosecution if they're complying um, with state law? Yeah, they kind of just, they sent out a memo asking them not to go after people, basically, who distributed it medically. Okay. So, okay, so yeah, like under the table stuff would still be yeah. highly illegal. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely interesting to see this movement towards, you know, rapid legalization and widespread recreational use because it's so sudden. You know what I mean? Yeah about how laws were in the late 90s compared to how they are now. We were basically ready to transition, but Anna, you said you had something you wanted to say? Yeah, I just kind of want, it's more of like, well, if you guys agree or disagree with this type of issue, I guess, perhaps, or ban. I was searching on Google, like federal government um, issues that were going on, and I found one, and it was um, on this resource, it's called Validpedia. Um, so it's like a federal policy on abortion from 2017 through 2018. Um, so I'm just going to read what it says and then just going to ask you guys to guess the question. Yes, this sir. is on January 19, 2018. While speaking to participants at the annual March for Life, a rally for activist, activists who oppose abortion, President Donald Trump said that his administration will always defend the very first right in the Declaration of Independence, and that is the right to life. We are protecting san, san, I don't know how to say that word, sanctity of life and the family as the foundation of our society. Um, I just kind of want to know, like, will you guys, do you guys like agree with that, or do you guys think like he's right, or 
Yeah, just kind of you guys agree with that or kind of disagree. Was there another way he could have said it like differently, I guess? So let me ask you this. What were the, the... So he's basically arguing against abortion, right? Yeah, it seems like it because um, it has said that apparently um, his actions, his major actions on abortion during the first two years in the office were issuing issuing a proposal to modify the chi- Title X family planning program that proposed making family planning clinics that refer patients for abortions and share finances for facilities with abortion providers um, to receive funding from the program. Additionally, healthcare providers will not be required to provide abortion constantly if it violated their moral or religious beliefs. So asking us like what our opinions on our abortion? Yeah. So I think that's a discussion that doesn't fit into this. It's not really state versus federal, but we can have that after this. Well, I mean, it it kind of can touch into state versus federal. There are some state laws which- Abortion isn't allowed. Yeah, versus like other states, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I don't have anything to back this up, but at one point, it was a really hot topic where um, after a certain amount of months in a woman's tummy, a baby could not be aborted because it would be considered a fully functioning human being. But in this one state, they allowed it even after it was over eight months, which caused a very huge uproar and doctors to feel very uncomfortable because they had to literally yank the child out. I remember seeing a little one article on this and it was it's not exactly state versus federal in this case but it would be the state law versus another state law I guess you could say due to the fact of abortion was not allowed past I think five months because that's when a child starts to form fully form into functionally human human being and then after five months, that state allowed you to still have an abortion. So I would say it depends on your stance of that. And once again, I have no evidence to support this. This is based off of past, not past experience, since I've never had a child and have never been aborted or had an abortion, I believe would be the correct terms. But it's based off of the fact that I saw an article in like a snippet of a video on it at one point when it was a big, huge uh, conspiracy, I believe it was what it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah, Building off of that, like, this is just my subjective opinion. And it's like, first of all, I'm a dude. I don't have a uterus. I don't have, you know, the required machinery to produce a human. So I don't get to really comment on it to, to a certain extent. But my belief would be not to limit you know, an individual's opportunity to abort if necessary. You know, obviously have certain stipulations, so it's not just a run and gun procedure, but you know what I mean? It's, it would be an, an, an accessible thing for those who actually need the procedure done. No, quick line. Again, all opinion. I'm gonna make that disclaimer. Yeah. And now then moving on from our slightly off topic discussion area. No, shall, no. What shall we talk about now? No. Well, um, let's see. okay, yeah, so I saw something that kind of interested me where there is this Supreme Court case. It was called um, Cooper versus Aaron in 1958. And my resource for this is uscourts.gov. And essentially, the course, the, the court case was based around the idea that several Southern state government officials were kind of declaring that they wanted to nullify the results of the, um, what is it called, like when a case is settled? Basically, the proceedings of the Brown versus Board of Education case, they wanted to nullify against that. And their argument was that uh, they felt that the federal courts were violating the Constitution. 
However, the court unanimously rejected this argument and held that only the federal courts can decide when the constitution is violated. Now, obviously, you know, Brown versus Board of Education ruled in favor of allowing integrated schools, which is a good thing. We want integration. We don't like segregation. It's inherently unequal. However, this ruling kind of interested me because I definitely agree with the federal government to the extent that they should not allow the southern states to make this nullification. But I don't necessarily agree with the federal government being the only entity that can say we're violating the constitution. You know what I mean? Like I feel like certain state powers or congregate state powers should, you know, have the ability to say, you know, hey, that's in violation of, you know, this sec this section, this article, and so forth, and make a, a direct reference. What, what's your guys' take on that? First, I have a question before I take any any stances on this. So yeah. it. And then I have like a somewhat summary that from what I got from that. So uh, it's a it, is it a state versus federal type of thing? Yeah. Um, so one of the, the states in question was the governor and legislature of Alabama. They were one of the states whose government officials refused, direct quotation, refused to follow the Supreme Court's Brown versus Board of Education decision. Um, and then what I had stated earlier about the state's feeling they could nullify the federal court decisions if they felt the federal courts were violating the constitution. What part of the constitution do they feel that they were violated? It doesn't specifically state right here. However, in reference to Brown versus Board of Education, um, the summary essentially states that, let me see what they stated. Okay, it was argued originally in 1896 in the Plessy versus Ferguson case that the doctrine of separate but equal was sanctioned by segregation and was still upheld. But in 1954, the um, court reversed that decision and they declared that separate schools are inherently unequal, which makes sense. Um, so I can't exactly cite where in the constitution they felt they were the federal government was over, overstepping its bounds and violating, but it seems to imply that they thought that separate, separate but equal was still some, like a good idea. Okay, so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something, and I'd like your opinions if it somewhat goes with what you're talking about, Robert. Generally, courts of general and special jurisdiction have original jurisdiction over most cases in appeal courts, and the, high, and the jurisdiction highest courts have appellate jurisdictions. But this is not always the case. For example, under Article 3, Section 2, Clause 2 of the U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Supreme Court is a court of appellate jurisdiction. However, under the same clause, that court has original jurisdiction in cases between states, such as usually concern disputes over boundaries or waterways, although what boundaries and waterways might not exactly be exactly it for this, but that was an example. But would that somewhat tie into what you guys are talking, what has happening with your case? Yeah, kind of. I mean, essentially, they felt that the constitution was violated, but it wasn't a dispute over like a physical entity. It's, well, I mean, kind of a physical entity, but they were more so nullifying the decision that the Supreme Court made. Um, okay, so it was Supreme and, Court, not federal court then. Yeah, but really what I, I'm kind of latching onto in this case is that idea that the federal government made the statement that only the federal government can decide when its actions are unconstitutional, which seems unfair in my eyes. So how would you guys approach that? Um, actually, um, according to some of my evidence, like the one I just, I just said, only the Supreme Court only the Supreme Court is a court of appellate jurisdiction, which means that they essentially they get the final say in what happens with things that may or may not violate 
the Constitution. Okay. And with uh, federal jurisdiction, they they have exclusive jurisdiction in a limited number of cases, such as federal criminal federal criminal cases, federal antitrust cases, federal bankruptcy cases, federal pat patent cases, copyright, some admi admiralty cases, and suits against the U.S. government, which I think is what this one is. But at the same time, Supreme Court usually reigns over the um, federal court, well, federal, federal court and jurisdiction when it comes to the thing about the Constitution because they are the ones who have the most say in if something is violating the Constitution or not. So okay. it might have not been in their bounds to say what they have said because they're not the ones who genuinely get the final say so wait, in that part of if it violates it. Because it says that the Supreme Courts are the one that makes that final decision or the federal courts? The Supreme Court makes a final decision if something violates the Constitution or not. Okay. When you... So our sources are actually conflicting. My source states that the court unanimously rejected this argument and held that only the federal courts can decide when the constitution is violated. Federal court has some say in that, but at the same time, Supreme Court does have a little bit of higher um, power in that, in that way. I did not specifically write it down, but it is in the source I was telling you guys about, about how most times Supreme Court is the one who gets the final say in if something is constitutional or not. I did not write it down since it was not pertaining to, to state or federal jurisdiction. It was supreme jurisdiction. Okay. Okay. No, I, yeah, that would, and that would make more sense too, because then. Yes, yeah, so they get some say, but they're not the final word. Because even if they are most of the times in the suits against the US government, there's not a whole lot of, my source did not give me a whole lot of information on that. So I'm not completely sure on that. But at the same time, my source also states that the Supreme Court usually rules over all the other ones when it is needed. And they mostly are ones who tell if something is constitutional or not. So it, it can be conflicting and confusing. Yeah. That while they have some say, they're, they don't usually get the final say. Yeah, I'm definitely satisfied with that, though, because then the, if the federal government made a claim, it can be taken to the Supreme Court and argued against. Okay, I'm glad you pointed that out. That, yeah. Yes. And that, yeah, that, answer, that is, answers my initial question. Yes. What are you guys thinking? Did you know that the federal government used to maintain the army, navy, delivered the mail, and did little else, and usually the states were the ones who did most of the work? This is from the source called... Apologies, give me just a second. Enotes.com. Enotes.com. And it is... Yes, it is by a certified educator, it says. I read through it and it seems very trustworthy, which is the main reason why I, I used it, but it could be wrong. Well, I mean, that would make sense to me, though, because, like, you want the states to be able to decide on everything else. Yes. And then at some point, it kind of changed and it switched, like it flip flopped a little bit. So the states and the federal government kind of switched some responsibilities around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and this kind of ties in what we were talking about early earlier in case of conflict which means i could be wrong with what i stated earlier in case of conflict federal law trumps by virtue of the supreme supreme supremacy clause in article i believe this is five but it says v1 or vi six okay that's six my apologies of the constitution the clause says that the constitution that the constitution the law enacted pursuant of the constitution and treaties made under the authority of the United States are the supreme law of the land, thus take procedures over contrary state laws. Okay. So they have yeah. higher jurisdiction compared to states. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes. Would Anna or Cherik, you'd like to add anything to any part of our discussion or make a new discussion point for us to focus on? No, I was just going to say that I agree with Robert that it's kind of unfair that the federal, you said the federal government, right, Robert, that they, the ones who said that they have like the, they only have, they're the ones that have the power, I guess, to kind of move things around. Kind of like they were the ones that get to decide if they're being unconstitutional. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just like, that's, that's, that's kind of unfair to say, you know, it's like, how can you, I guess, Yes, the federal power does have like um the federal power. Wow, the federal government has like power to do certain stuff, but for them to kind of feel like you know we're above, I guess. Yeah. Every government and we're like higher than every government out here is kind of <laughs> ridiculous, I guess, in a way. Should I say? Because yeah. um, and I actually didn't know the Supreme Court were higher, I guess than them because they apparently the Supreme Court is the one that takes the final decision and things. So yeah, I think it's kind of cocky of the federal <laughs> government to say all of that. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Could I be seen as that, yeah. 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 Supreme Court is above the federal government in certain types of cases. It's especially with certain things like on um, how this is one of my uh, sources. I did not write it down in my notes, but it's one of my sources about how like in, I believe it's Washington, not Washington. In one of these other states, they, they use the Supreme Court instead of a general court because the Supreme Court is their general court in that state. Mm, I get you. Okay. Yeah. So in some cases, the state, they go to the Supreme Court instead of the general court. And then in some other cases, someone can take a case to a federal court. And then with that federal court, they share jurisdiction with the general court due to the fact it was, it's like a co-jurisdiction because they brought it to the federal court to, for, the, for the proceedings and everything. And the general court can watch the proceedings and check for any errors. Yeah. So it's it's slightly confusing. Yeah, it's a big mix around of powers and who's actually getting the final say. Well, that's interesting that some states by default just use the Supreme Court. Yeah. And I know that. 